Hello, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Warm greetings from Armenia. When I just says, I said, warm greetings from Armenia. <laughs> you know, we are living. Our life, it looks like we are living in a refrigerator, right? <laughs> and every time you have to remind yourself that you belong to God. Amen. And sometimes I said, talk to myself and I said, remind to that face that it face belongs to Jesus. Yes. Because when I'm sitting with those society and people around me, and they look sad, they look, you know, I want to have the same face. I want to, yeah, I want to, I want to be tough. I want to be sad, you know. But Jesus is living in us. And, you know, we have always to remember that the ways of this world and our ways are different. Amen? You can see now. God bless you. You know what? I know that you are tired. And I am tired too. You know, but why don't we smile at each other and remind ourselves again that Jesus loves us? You know, if today we still have some hope in some things, you know, and we still can put our trust in the things that we possess. Let me remind you that could be a time that everything will be taken away from you. And if your trust is in those things, rather in Jesus, you know, you, you won't have a smile on your face. So everything you do and everything you possess, you better give it to the hands of the Lord. Because I live in a part of the world that the people can possess things and they can lose those things in a moment. Just like that. And if your heart is that strong attached to those things, it can turn your world upside down. And you will probably want to hang up yourself. You know. That's why we believe in Jesus, sisters and brothers. Amen. 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 Take all the world, a song sings, but leave me Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't, I cannot count how many times I lost things. And how many times, uh, you know, I was about to lose my life. And then right after that moment, God was asking me, I did I, I was a, uh, really I was prepared to give my life away or did I have been prepared to give certain things away to stay with Jesus? You, you cannot answer those questions until you face the, those problems. Amen? Amen? You can say, hallelujah, yes, brother, we will. But if I will require, you know, maybe a little thing from you, it could completely offend you, and you will leave the church. You'll say, ah, no, I don't want to stay in this church. I want to go. Okay? But let me remind you one thing, that we have to have a thankful hearts. Right. Amen? Amen? You know, you say, ask Lord, it is good. You say, be thankful. Because you have house, you have home. You know, I'm going to tell you something. The most happiest time of my life was time that I had nothing. <laughs> because those other things, you know what they had, what they add unto me? Huh? All the problems. <laughs> Only more tension. In this modern world, as many things that you gather together, and you have car, you have house, you have uh, summer house, you have something else, obligation, and your head is being like that. You know? When I was a young Christian and young preacher, I had nothing. I had my Bible. I doesn't have a car to ride on. I didn't have a house to live in. But I'm 100% I'm telling you, there were no a happiest men in the world than me. And I spent 
my Bible school, and sometime I was all that I had to eat. It was a little uh, coffee plate with the oil. I had a little salt on, and dip a dry bread in, and soak it to, to, to stay alive. I was in a Bible school in Siberia, and it was down from uh, 0, 37, 38 degrees. I have only my summer shoes. But I'm telling you, the whole city has uh, sicknesses, but I was uh, never had any grippy. And you know what I have for, instead of a warm socks, what I have on my shoes? I have all, uh, you know, I have newspapers wrapped around my feet. <laughs> and because it leaks, I have some plastic bags on my feet. <laughs> but I was the happiest man in the world. <laughs> I don't know. It, all things that I'm sharing with you right now, it's not what I'm going to preach. But this refers to the same subject, being thankful. Amen. So, why I'm saying this? Because it doesn't take a lot of things to be thankful. It doesn't, uh, you know, it refers to have a little things to be thankful. It's just a position of your heart. Amen. 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 Who you are in Christ Jesus. Well, okay, let's read from the book. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Chapter 17, verse 11. Will anybody <coughs> help me and read it from the English Bible? Uh, Who has a good English here? No, <laughs> oh, Brother Joshua has. <laughs> Will you brother read it out loud for us? And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed in the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And then, next slide, 40. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Bring it until the 19th, brother. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down in his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where are there not ten cleansed? And where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto them, Arise, go that way, that faith that may be all. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. From now on, we're going to talk about the position of your heart, who you really are. We're going to talk that we were all strangers to God. But we came to him in desperate need. I don't know how you came, but I was completely crushed down, smashed, wiped out. I was about to kill myself. That, that why I came to Christ to have a chance to live again. Maybe you came because you feel good to, to stick around the good people, you know, who will never beat you up. <laughs> Or you feel comfortable to be, you know, with the kind of people. But I came to the Lord because there was no other chance for me. You know what I'm seeing today? I'm seeing that less and less people in the world, especially in the church, because we are not talking about the world. God is dealing with His bride, His church. Amen? He is interested in us. That is the special quality of the character that he wants to rise up and base in our hearts. That we will be able to say thank you Lord for having nothing. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let us start reading and see. Those ten came to the Lord. All of them, they have the same problem, right? Amen. Me and my friends, we, when we first came to the Lord when I was 22 years old. Yeah. When I, I was 19, I'm sorry. I came to the Lord. 
It, it has been 22 years ago at my office. Uh, these guys were so full of joy before the Lord. But the Bible says there is no chance for the troubles and the problems not to come to our life. Amen? But if you are the such a man who has been ready to turn away from God with all the troubles that come into your life, it, it, it would, won't take a long time for you to leave the church. Amen? Okay, you say, Pastor, you don't know what kind of problems I'm going through. Let me ask you something. Did ever, did ever anybody of you been under the gun, under the machine gun? Have you ever been beat up to lose your conscience for Christ? I'm saying this for the sake and the glory of God. God knows my heart. I have been beaten up, lost my conscience. People was pushing me with a machine gun. They were trying to shoot me. And I was everywhere. But God was always with me. Yeah. You know, uh, you have, don't clap, please. Don't. I, 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 I really doesn't appreciate those things. I hate standing on the pulpit. I'm sorry. These things aggravate me, you know, standing on the pulpit, being higher. You know, I want to go all the way down, you know, because Christ Jesus says in his word, the greatest of you will become a servant of you. Amen? Amen. And if I would have privilege and time, I will take a big uh, plate with water and start washing your feet. But I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters, because I, I, I have an assurance in God. I met you 20, 20 years ago. Amen? when we just started to dream about having a church in Armenia. And we were full of dreams and, you know, imagine, our imagination was stood up, yeah? And we were thinking that we're going to have this and that and that. We, today we have it. Amen. We have it. Amen. And this is, this is not because of me, but this is because of us. Amen. Today you drop your money. Today you come and stood up on your knees. You made it true. So I'm here to cherish you, to tell you thank you. You done it. You did it. Are you happy? Yeah. Do you know anybody else that can stand on his knees and create a church in another country? Do you have any friend like that? Yes. That who pray and who put his money and all of a sudden the building appears somewhere. But you are the one that he makes this miracle. Yes. You don't. Ah, you are probably you are not getting me. Yes. Please leave your job, leave your uh, you know, salary. Don't complain with your uh, boss. Just come back to the church and just let us spend this short time together. Amen. Amen. We are here to encourage each other in our faith. Uh, you know, I'm seeing uh, why, why I'm saying this because you can think that to give money and the offerings and being faithful in tithes is good enough to build up the church, but not at all. It requires you because there is a church and there is a ministry. It requires you now to nourish that people. It requires you to come over that place and take responsibility of what you was dreaming about because it is not my idea it was God's idea and we have a common dream and that common dream has been accomplished today won't you be thankful for that what do you have to do you have to come back to Jesus and say thank you Lord are you happy that you, you know, just a simple people in this country, without the high education, you know, not the probably up, not the best ones, you know, from out of the crowd, but you made those things possible. So now you have to nourish that. It's not the about time about to leave everything and go back, but I want to stir up your zeal toward the work of God, toward the ministry of God. And remind you that when I was here and I was quite young, 
and full of the you know zeal for God to go and minister. You are saying, Brother Bernard, look at we're coming over to help you. We were coming to help you, yeah, we're coming to teach, preach. Where you are today? I know some of you are in Paris and in London. It's okay with that. But what about you? I can I can just put my finger on all of you that I know for 20 years now. <laughs> Amen? How many times I came to, to visit you? How many times you came to visit me? <laughs> Is it the same amount of time and same amount of money that we're spending? Is it just going to be the same effort that we will uh, put in the kingdom of God? Yes. So why? Why are you sitting down? You have to come up, you know, from the comfort line. Make a step toward God. Because I, I love you. I love, I, I'm seeing this zeal, the prayers, everything. But if you will not make this step, you won't be able to see anything. <coughs> Amen? I hate Facebook. Because you can go to Facebook and see pictures and you're satisfied. <laughs> But I would like you to be so, you know, wondering. I want to see that church in Armenia. I want to go there. I want to see the brothers and sisters minister. And then suddenly you come to visit us and you see what God has done. Amen? Amen. That's the true way. That's the right way. It's not like pushing like on the Facebook. Amen? <laughs> or quoting me, you know. <laughs> I'm talking about real things, guys. Yes. Yes. That's because I love you. you know, if I don't love you, I don't want to see you over there. I will probably quit asking you to come visit us. I will go back and be, you know, be quiet. But I want you to participate. If, because if you will participate, you will be the one who gets all the gain, all the happiness. Amen? Amen. Because I remember how we we were sowing those seeds of faith in Armenia, apostolic revival in Armenia, with crying. And today is the time to go and reap it with the joy. And it is requires from you to go to the field, reap it, and share the joy of the fruit. Amen? Amen. God bless you. So you see these ten guys. They have the same common problem, but only one, and he has been counted in the Bible for Jews as an infidel. He was a Samarian, I guess. But only he has this heart. To go, I, he has, I have to go back and say thank you. Amen? Guys, it's, not, it's about the time for to come back and say thank you. Amen? To reap the fruits of your labor. To see what God has done through your faithful offerings, tithes, prayers, support. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. We need to do this. How long would you say, Pastor, we will have to do this? Until Christ will come back to us, or we will leave our body and go to Him. Amen? Amen. We, we have no chance to get weary. You know, say, ah, it's so hard. You know, God wants us to be in His duty. Amen? As long as it takes. You know. You know how many times I was about to quit? You probably don't know. But we believe in, in wonderful God. And our God is extravagant God. He is a lover of my soul. You know what he's done? he does? Every time I want about to quit, he comes with a bouquet of flowers. Yes. <laughs> he comes with a lover. He comes with a new, new soul. And that soul is a great blessing for me. So what? Look at this. This is the, what I was going to see. I'm here to see this guy to repent. See his life to be changed. Amen? So, you know, you have to learn to become like that. Because all of us never been like that. 
It's no matter how many gifts they will give me, I will not say thank you. I will receive it as it because it has to be like that. And I think that you receive what God is doing in your life. Amen. As you think that it has to be like that. It is intended like that. No. Did you still surprise yourself when God is offering you something to you? When God gives you something that you were desiring? Did you still, you know, in love with Him? You come back saying, thank you God. I found myself, you know, I was praying for the pair of sauce. Because my teacher in the Bible school said, if you never receive a pair of socks from your God, by the prayer, not from begging from brothers and sisters, but through your faith, by the prayer, by believing in the word of God, don't ask him for a car. Okay, so I started that below God, yeah, at that level. So it was a first request, request. I said, give me a pair of socks. <laughs> you know, I, he gave me a thousand pairs of socks. Those socks are continue to fall in from the heaven like a manna. <laughs> but, but what I'm, I'm pointing here, I'm, I'm pointing that from the little things to the greatest things in your life. After in the agonia, agonia is very there. agonia. After you need to battle, the battle that you have to fight. You know, and you send me, and you say, Brad, God, here we are, send brother by brother. <laughs> Is it fair? Is it fair I'm asking you? Bible says, when no, no, it's not fair. Not at all. You say, God, here I am, send me. You doesn't say, here I am, send my neighbor. <laughs> Do you ever read in your Bible that any, somebody did like that? You stood, you're standing here saying, here I am, but send brother my God to your life. It's an economical crisis there, you know. Yeah. I am so grateful to God that God has honored me. You know, you can never underestimate the call of God in your life. Mm -hmm. It's like a rope in your heart, and God is always, when you go farther, you roll it back, mm -hmm. and it is hooked in your heart. And you cannot, you know, you say, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't. You say, have you ever seen dogs that, the, you know, that pastor wants to, you know, bring the dog back, and the dog says, no, no. no. <laughs> You can feel like that, yeah. But when you come to your master, there's a fresh food, fresh drink, you know, comfort. Amen? Amen. So, I want you from this day and, you know, for other time, remember that God is not playing with us. When you pray for something, He brings to pass. Amen. But when you pray for, when you pray for a baby, and he gives us baby, we don't turn our back and go away. We have to take care of that baby. Amen? It's not about to leave your baby. So I call this church as a daughter church of a crossroad in Armenia. Amen? And all glory belongs to God. But you are the participants. You are ones who made it true. I don't know how you see this. But that's what I see. That because you pray, it makes it possible for me to go. And because you do give your tithes and offerings, it makes it possible for me to build. Amen? Amen. Now is the time to share joy. Amen. Because when you come back to Armenia, you will see a three-floor building with a nice garden. Yeah, you will see a new place that we are planning to build up and grow a bigger sanctuary. Amen. You will see the church like this. Amen. No less. Okay? Amen. You say, Pastor Badrat, but there is few people. Sometimes it's few people. Sometimes there is hundreds of people. But God is always there. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Are you ready to follow God when you will be alone? 
if everybody will say, we don't want to believe, and I have seen that happen in my life. The guy who, called, who calls me to God, who talks to me, I was meeting, uh, meeting with him in New York City, and he turned his life completely, uh, you know, and he turns his back to God. And he lives without God, he's okay, and he was offering me the same chance, you know. <laughs> See, why don't you leave that and start living like, like me? And you know, just for one short moment, my, my mind was thinking back. And you know what I remember? That's what you have to remember always. From the, about the deep of the hole that me and you have been when he calls us. And about the high of the rock that he has placed us now. Amen? And I said, Satan, no chance. No way. If this whole world will leave Jesus, I will follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. Is it that your decision? Not because it is good to be here, not because it is comfortable here, not because it's the new, new chairs are here, not because the people are inviting solid preachers for you, but because you have been called by God to follow Him always. Amen. 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 It requires nothing else, sisters and brothers. I love it. I just enjoy it when I'm seeing these simple people coming together day by day. Day by day, for year after year, 10 years after 10 years, 20 years after 20 years. And you come and you see, they they are still there. And you say, yes, surely God is worthy to follow. Amen? Amen. Yeah. God bless you. I love you all. But please, don't get weary doing good things. Amen? Amen. When Paul came to Galatians, he said, Galatians, you were going good, but who teach you to stop? I think you got some little theory here, yes. so that's why I'm trying to stir up your zeal. You got quite comfortable here, you know, in this nice sanctuary with the good preachers. You know how many thousand people will dream to meet with Irving Baxter in Armenia? Do you know that? How many honorary preachers will dream, just dream, to spend the moment with your in Baxter? But you had the chance. Amen. I don't know. You cannot underestimate it, and you cannot even overestimate it. God bless you. Please, make this decision in your life. I'm going to go all through the end of this way. Because Jesus says, if, if anybody put his hands on the blood and he turns his head, he is what? Not loyal. Right? It's no matter you say amen, you don't say amen. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a preacher. I don't appreciate anything like that. I will just say what I have to say. Okay? And your prayers may be like that. Because you are quite the people who will work and who will do what he has to do, no matter of situation. Amen? Yeah. I go to my church very excited Sunday, and I see five people are sitting there. <laughs> I say, God, is it worth it to leave my job, leave everything that I have? Uh, this night, this, this great sun in, 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 in Greece, you know, walking at the shore, having ice cream, and come to this desert just for these five people. <laughs> <laughs> and not any one of them they are fitting my requirements okay I'm always or better than them or thinking that I'm worse than them <laughs> <laughs> so this is why Jesus says let the cross be filled and the mountains be going straight right? and only then Jesus can come God bless you <laughs> That's so nice, that's so great that God has made 
again possible for me to come visit you. I hope my wife will be able to come. But you know, there is a thing in the world that we, they call economical crisis. <laughs> but God never had a crisis. <laughs> we, we believe in God who, who He doesn't have any lack of anything. He has everything. Yes. You remember in a, one of the prophets he said, would you bring me a lamb or would you bring me, offer me a goat? He said, no, I don't need it. Because they all belong to me. Amen. Would you want to be brought, bring me a gold or silver? It's all gold and silver belongs to me. So there is nothing to offer him. But there is one thing that we can always offer him. And he wants that. What is that? Yes. Thanksgiving of our needs and, you know, worship of our heart. Amen? But he loves that. He wants that. How I know? Because it's, no matter I'm alone or there's you know, hundreds or a thousand people, we have been lead, lead by the leader of music, music leader or it is on the YouTube. Whenever I start to worship him, he comes to me. So why I'm saying this? Because I'm going to now stick it up with the message when I was preaching in the book of Luke. You can go to God. But sometimes God can make this moment to happen for you. Do you ever think that Jesus, he was on that street, on that road, just for that guy? I'm going to show you, yes. He made his way to that crossroad just to meet with this guy. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! No, the hallelujah is a war cry. It's not the hallelujah. <laughs> but the hallelujah! Yeah. Because the guest will scare something. Yeah, it's a war cry. I'm sorry to scare some, some of those who sleep. <laughs> but I can think that it is my duty because I put them to sleep, I have to wake them. <laughs> About a little time, you will have to stand up and go to your house. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't miss the moment. Christ was on that crossroad because it was in the mind of God. Amen. Before the universe has been created. Amen. For him to have this heavenly visitation with this guy. I don't know how you believe, but I believe if there will be nobody in the world, Christ will come and He will be crucified only for me. Only for me. Do you remember the situation when a big crowd came to see Jesus? And there were all women, you know, with the bleeding in her, in her body. So I'm going to tell you a very interesting fact. That Christ wasn't there for any one of them but only for the lady. Amen. You know what? Because when she touches the end of his garment, Amen. it flows in her body. Woo! Yes. It comes all over her. She said, I need yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen? He said it was just an old lady. But he, you know, what we want from God? We are very strange people, you know? And Christ was always dealing with the strange people. He said, what these people require from me? The back, John the Baptist, he came, and he was, you know, you know tough looking, you know, with this, you know, uh, skin on his body. Yeah. He was eating crotches with the, uh, with the wild honey. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but they took him and they cut his head off. And now I came, I've been friendly with them, I'm sitting down with them, Having fun with them, I love them. I eat with them, I drink with them, but they are still unhappy. Okay? So remind to your face that you belong to Jesus. And put this beautiful smile back to your face. So what we learned today, that God is a God of a moment. 
Amen? Amen. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss the moment. Because, you know, God is a God of a second, third chance. And when you miss the moment, even then, don't, you don't get disappointed. Amen? Amen? Because when Jesus came to the pool, there were 2,000 people approximately around that pool. And there were guys who wasn't able to get into the water before the angels started to screw up the water to get healed. He has nobody to drag him and throw him to the pool. <clears throat> Do you think about that? The angel comes to stir up the water, and now Yahweh, the king and the god of the universe, came to this earth to visit him, to find him in the midst of the crowd, to heal him, and become somebody, somebody who drags him to the water. Just think about it. You never underestimate that. Ah! Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord! Amen. To God be the glory. Kindness of the Lord to each one of us. Yes. Amen? Yes. And I, I, I strongly believe if you go today to your house, you're going to come to your room. Suddenly, you will say, God, I'm already washed my feet, I lay in my bed, and I'm feeling so good. I have this, you know, Mary Kay lotion on my feet. Yeah. And I cannot stand up and open the door. But you know what you're going to do? This is from the book of Song of Songs. You're going to put his finger in that little hole in your heart, in the keyhole. And let this anointing drop in your heart. And then he will make a great desire in you to stand up and cherish him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! And when you find him, you say, I find my lower, lower of my soul. Amen? And I'm never letting go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, anytime that you are ready to turn your back to him, remember that all the breaches has been burned away. You have no chance to go. Yes. You know what, what, you know, always happen to the people who leave God? They become, uh, as the Bible says, they call it, you are salt that not being used. They throw it under the feet of the people. Amen? Right. And they, they let them step on it. So don't let yourself go that long. That God bless you. I love you all. And for me, you are special people. Each one of you, I know, I think I don't remember your names because you are too many. <laughs> but I know you all by your face. Amen? I know, I'm, I'm saying you, I know all of you by your face. The Bible says that He knows us by our face. God bless you. You know. This place makes me nervous. I don't know why God calls me to be a preacher. But whenever I go in this world, I try to hide myself in the last row. Ah, and somebody say, Brother Padrinat, will you come stand here and preach? I'm sitting in the airport, I want to keep silence, I want to hide there, you know. Just... I'm nobody. And then somebody starts to talk and they, they come to me and say, don't you know him? Tell us your opinion. I said, I cannot close this mouth closed. I have to open it and start talking. Because this is my calling. Yeah. That my God calls me from this world. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. God bless you. I, I found myself in very strange situations. God calls me to preach one guy, so I went to him. 
But I was quite uncomfortable to start conversation with you. So you know what God did? He started conversation. <laughs> he started to preach to me. I said, my, my, there's no place to hide. You know, that what Bible says, the city on the top of the hill cannot hide. Amen? Amen. And Bible says, there's no necessity of light to bring it to the house and hide it at the bottom of the bed. Amen. You have to place it up. Say, I don't want to be placed up. <laughs> but God says, I have to place my light up because oh, this world needs Jesus. Amen. Not because I feel good and comfortable about them, but just because this world desperately needs Jesus. Amen. 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 So please do not restrain your mouth from preaching gospel. Right. Everywhere you go, yes. you have to become a preaching machine. <laughs> My friends, all of my neighbors, they hate me. You know why? Whenever they say anything, I start preaching back to them. Yeah. I said, don't you have any other subject to talk to us? Okay, I said, let's talk about bicycle. But do you know that the bicycle has been made by God, you know? Oh, okay, again. Yeah. Preacher goes crazy now. <laughs> God bless you. It's so nice to be you know, among the friends. And I really hate to be high here. I would already want to be down here. But Sister Baby came and she said, okay, get behind that pulpit. <laughs> you know, it takes different kind of people, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't always take tall, big guys with, with a nice English. <laughs> Takes a little bit, guys. Short guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but when you oh, when I am opening my toolbox, I have a little little screwdrivers and I have big screwdrivers. I have a little, you know, hammer and I have a big hammer. So you know, it requires a situation, requires the special tool. Amen. So for the little country, God has chosen a little preacher okay, who will sit among the little sisters and brothers from Philippines, but will do the great work of God. Amen. Amen. Let's see if I will say, Sister, could you please uh, draw a little screw? Would you go to get the hammer? No, sure not. You'll go open your toolbox and get you exactly the right, right tool for the right purpose. Amen? Amen. So, not the accident. Don't let yourself think ever that you are the accidentally a believer, follower, minister. He knows which one of us, Amen. and even the hairs, the black blood of hairs have been missing on his head. <laughs> but I know that he has counted them all. I think he's making a false hair. When I will go back, he will give it to me back. <laughs> I have a nice curly hair, you know. <laughs> and I will ask him, can I have this curly hair back? <laughs> oh my. Okay, God bless you. What time is it? Ooh, we're on the way. They're playing late for us. <laughs> it's probably there is a Many, you know, happy demons in Armenia who, who love me to be missing from Armenia. <laughs> because they know that the trouble is coming back. My wife, for instance, she knows that her trouble is coming back. <laughs> oh. But it is intended to be that way right? because, you know, it's, we didn't finish yet. We did not finish yet. I'm coming back. <laughs> God bless you. Keep praying for Armenia. Yeah. Keep being a strong follower of God because I'm always watching you. <laughs> yes, I, I got my eyes on you. 
you think I forgot about you, but when I stood, when I came, come every time when I come, I know I'm watching. Him. Who is missed? But I know where is the missing ones are. Because thank God for the Facebook. <laughs> you say, brother, we cannot understand you. Thank God for Facebook or you hate Facebook. <laughs> Always. God bless you. Stay faithful to the crossroad. Stay faithful to the prayers. Stay faithful to everything that you are, to your efforts that you do. Because the reward is on his way. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Either he will call us and we will meet him in the sky, yeah. or he will come to us. Anyway, we're going to get our reward back. Yeah. In everything that we did, not in vain. Amen? Nothing has been in vain. God bless you. We all stand, we're going to pray in dismissal. Thank you, Brother Brad Rock, for that wonderful message and for lifting up our hearts. I believe everyone should have a smile on their face when we leave the house of God. We're going to keep in our prayers in Jesus' name and God sends continuous revival into our media. Amen. Let's pray right now for our media as he goes back. Jesus, in your precious name, God, we pray for your protection upon our brother. We pray for the anointing of God to rest upon him in Jesus. We pray, Lord God for revival, Lord God, for provision, God, for a strength, God, not just for him, but also for his family, God, for his wife and children, Lord Jesus. We come up against any spirit, Lord God, that would try to work against them, God, and distract and discourage, God. In Jesus' name we pray, God, send them back in the force and might of your spirit, God, in your precious name we pray, in the name of Jesus, wonderful name, God, amen. Thank you, Jesus.